all right hey everybody sorry if you uh were like wait wait is live again what's happening here all right uh hey important phone call you know how it goes um strange thing was you know gotta we we got rear-ended and now there's things to be fixed in a car all right back to where we were um, I, uh, I've started laying in some of the darkest areas around here. I made a mixed black, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, and now I'm just trying to block in. Now look, I'm not going to try to really get this really close or just right. Um, I'm going to use these bigger brushes to kind of lay in some of these um, values that I see. And so right now I'm just looking for kind of my darkest values. And so I see some here in the nose. And, you know, it gets a little, like, kind of a cooler gray on top, but, you know, on the bottom here, that nose looking, looking super cute, as only a red panda's nose can. And a little bit of the mouth visible here. Uh, it gets uh, fairly, fairly dark. I think, you know, using this same brush, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to block in the eye shape, like so. Do the same on this side. And I did a quick sketch, uh, just using a white charcoal uh, on top of a ground layer. This ground layer is just a rubbed in raw umber. And, uh, you know, that, that just gives me something to work on top of that you know, isn't uh, white, and I think that's that's helpful. We've got a few other dark spots here in the ear, and then we can move on from blocking in our darkest points. Now, what I like to do, kind of from this place, is take the next step and go uh, kind of the next lighter that I see. So, hello, Rob. Good to see you. <laughs> hey, I'm I'm great. Uh, I, I hope it. I hope the you know there was something valuable uh, in that tutorial. Uh, so uh, thank thanks for thanks for watching, and um, I hope something good uh, turned out of it. Speaking of Rob, I, I checked out your channel uh, and saw that uh, you you made some really a really small loose ring on the wood that on your short uh, your little uh, YouTube short. That was awesome. Uh, by the way, that was kind of mind blowing. Um, so way to go on that, man. So check out Rob's, uh, channel and look at this, uh, tiny ring he made. <laughs> so cool. Um, okay. Uh, so, so kind of jumping, jump, in, jump back in. Um, you know, I'm, I'm working from dark to light and I've got, uh, so my, my darkest values kind of laid in now and I'm going to take the next step and just for, because my kind of my mind's going there, I'm gonna just uh, dive into this burnt burnt umber, which you know, kind of very strong, rich brown, and I'm gonna bring it in underneath here. When when I when I probably one of the final things I'm gonna do is make a few lines to describe the uh, the whiskers, uh, but I'm gonna save that for last um, and and work work on other areas until I think that's about ready to put in you know that's going to be one of those like f finishing touches when, once everything else is described um so uh we're gonna get this rock in here where else do i see and i'm just asking myself where else do i see some of this really dark it's you know but reddish um in fact i could make it a little more red if i wanted grab a little uh, alizarin crimson because I do feel like, you know, it does get pretty red here. Maybe burnt sienna would be a little more accurate. Um, uh, but, you know, just some of that red for the red panda. So, and, and some of these, you know, reds are really dark. And, you know, I, I don't want to keep the value as best I can while maintaining the color, you know. And when we get those all together, uh, you know, that's when that's when the magic happens, so. 
All right, working from dark to light. Um, I'll probably leave the you know overwhelming majority of this painting kind of looking undone, unfinished. Uh, but I'll still try to block in most of uh, the, the face. We're going to get the major areas of uh, fur and these, these planes blocked in. So, Yeah, that goblet was way cool, Rob, for real. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed the video. All right. Um, all right, so kind of, kind of taking... The next step, so I've got a, some decisions to make here. You know, do I do I move into some of these darker kind of grays in the ear? That would probably be the next lightest. Um, see a little bit of that happening here and there, and we're going to keep this very painterly. And that's one way when you're painting any animal uh, is to leave leave that brush stroke. Um, kind of bare as it is uh, in, in doing so you'll you'll experience um, I think a, a greater you know I mean animals like like small children are, are like always on the move right uh, unless they're napping and then they're like even extra cute if they're napping um, but when they're not uh, uh, you know it seems like they're always kind of on the move and and I think making your brush strokes and kind of operate in the same way with, with a little bit of motion um, helps kind of maintain the life of, uh, of that in the moment. Okay, so I'm kind of pulling around here. There's some nice uh, cooler blues here and uh, like they're darker, but they're cooler. So one, one way I, I try to achieve that is if I have my mixed black, and I need to just make it a little cooler of black, a little bit lighter, I will add cerulean blue to my black. And so if I just kind of take a little bit of that black, dip into the cerulean, and then, you know, here's kind of where I see that happening. And it's, you know, I didn't add white, uh, didn't, didn't quite have to, uh, but that just made for this lighter area here, um, just on the other side. And again, we're not, you know, I kind of see that here. I see it here. Try not to get too detailed. Um, we've got a lot of blocking in yet to do. And um, we'll, we'll get there. But I like that, that blue, the cerulean blue plus the black can, um, my mixed black can make this kind of lighter where light is falling on something relatively dark. And, and you didn't, uh, the bonus is you didn't have to use white. Not that there's anything wrong with using white for some of those areas, but um, when possible, I just recommend using color. Um, gives, gives a little more life, I think, and prevents that chalkiness that, that can happen um, when, when we just start adding a bunch of white to like, oh, that needs to be lighter, add white. Um, try to avoid that as much as possible and kind of see, see where it goes. So it's a very overcast day, um, out, out of my Northern, my Northern exposure window and, um, really just kind of perfect for shooting the video, assuming that it stays like this, which there's no promises there. Um, we should have some really nice, even light, uh, diffused, even light throughout the day. Uh, for shooting a video, great day for it. Didn't plan that, uh, just just happened. Got a little darker spot up there. Um, okay, I'm gonna keep keep moving. Uh, we've one thing I might do before I get too far into it is establish the outline, just that, kind of that background color. That way I can work my brush strokes in, into it, into wet paint. Um, and uh, so I think I'm gonna do that really quick. It's not terribly exciting, but um, you know. Yes, Rob, question, love it. Are you thinning your paint for this underpainting? So uh, I'm not gonna, this, this won't be an underpainting today. Um, Rob, I'm gonna, uh, this is gonna be a one and done. 
So one layer, um, I'm gonna, I'll use thicker paint where needed and maybe some, in some areas it'll, uh, it'll have coverage. Maybe some areas you'll still see the, that, that uh, ground layer. Um, so um, yeah, this time I'm not, I'm not gonna worry about doing an underpainting. If I were, if I were working on the, uh, on the figure or, you know, things of that nature, then, you know, I'm, I'm more apt to, uh, to get, uh, that, 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 the underpainting, uh, in place because I think skin tones work better that way. Just, um, so kind of like I did in the eye video, that was like a one layer, um, what some people call a la prima, you know, kind of one and done. And, you know, that was that. Um, okay, so I've got some green here. I don't know that I want it this dark, uh, but you know, I'm gonna make it a little cooler. You know, his face is gonna be very warm. I want that face to come forward. And yeah, I mean, yeah, I want some kind of greenish uh, hue to be in the background here. So I'm using a little Viridian. And of these earth tones over here, uh, raw umber is a little more green. Uh, and you can see, I mean, you, might be able to see, I don't know, it's pretty, probably pretty small in the video, but raw umber is a little greener. Uh, burnt umber is a little warmer, a little more orangey, a little more green. Um, and so you can, well, just temperature wise, you can make some decisions like, oh, I, I want it to feel a little cooler back here. Um, and I like, I like putting in some of this and yeah, this is not exactly what's in the source material, but that's okay. Um, just so that I've got a little bit of sense of space and I'm going to leave it unfinished here and, um, maybe a little brush strokey to kind of match what I hope will be some of that, uh, brush energy. I like, uh, in the source where it gets a little lighter back behind, but I'm not gonna get too into that at the moment. Their faces, uh, you know, when I was drawing this on here, you know, I made a lot of uh, adjustments thinking, no, that, but their faces are very small to compare to this big you know, skull up here. Uh, and no matter how many times I drew it, it, it felt, uh, felt wrong. Uh, so there was, there was numerous, uh, kind of a sketching on top of a sketch on top of a sketch until I was like, okay, I think, I think this is it. Um, so yeah, I want to just establish some of this, uh, darker color background, um, little greenish, uh, to hopefully set off what's going to be a really intense orange, you know, right here. That, and yeah, that's kind of what's happening in the source material, but I'm not, not too concerned about it, obviously. This is a this is a really small painting. It's uh, just five by seven, um, and so it's you know there's not going to be a lot of room to render and um, and things like that. So I did want to get something in, just a little sense of place, and. And I want to, you know, when I make some of the brush strokes, I want to brush into wet paint um, so that I can achieve some of that texture I'm, I'm talking about. We'll see how, how visible it is. Okay, there, that's a, that's a good run of it. That way that's at least somewhat s kind of blocked in. Hey dad, how's it going? <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, hey, Dad, this is uh, Rob. Rob's out of the UK, uh, if I'm remembering right, uh, and uh, is, a, is, a, is a painter. He's uh, working on this painting. And uh, Rob, Ernie, that's my dad. I mean, we have the same name, right? So that makes sense. Uh, not, uh, not inspired by Lion Guard, like my kids are always watching, but, but uh, just thinking, you know what? I don't I don't do enough animal paintings. Uh, I was really just considering that the other day that I'd like to do a little more. And I love, uh, I, I do really love kind of keeping a, a painterly look so that, you know, the fur feels very kind of alive and, um, and 
and so anyhow, uh, working, working into it. I always love doing it whenever I do it. I just rarely do it uh, because I usually don't have very good source material. Um, all right, next steps. I'm looking at some of my shapes here and decide kind of what I want to do. And the nice thing about this is we'll be able to work back and forth, work in and out. And um, next darkest, I think I'm going to kind of work up into this area. But I'm going to leave that brush as my, my dark brush. I've got a background brush if I want to keep coming into that background. And let's see. Decide which which weapon which weapon do I want to use? All right, we're gonna stick with the flats. This is a four, the Utrecht uh, 239 series. Um, uh, it's a mixed synthetic, and it's you know I've, I've just kind of grown to love, grown to love these. I tell you what I'm gonna do before I do that. I'm gonna dive in and lay out just some of my highlights. Uh, I you know I always forget this. I I. I like to establish those darks, but then I like to also establish a couple of highlights. And that way I've got my bookends for value. So I, you know, I'm gonna switch it up. I'm gonna grab a little bit of this lead white. I'm gonna use lead white today. I like um, I like it. It's the paint body and the way it works. It, it's, a, it's really stringy. I don't know if you can kind of tell. It's uh, the way that, uh, lead white it's very it feels very different from the buttery feel of these others um that's how you know it's good lead white and uh i just like it because you know you it's transparent um and you can do so much with that to me it feels a little less chalky than like titanium although you know you're dealing with hazardous materials so so I thought I would just lay out a couple of these lights where I just see some of the lightest areas. We may come, I'll probably come back in and add a little bit of color to these on top as I'm working, but I just thought, yeah, this is good. This gives me a little, um, like I said, a couple bookends on value to understand where I'm going and what's happening. So where do I see this? brightest whites could have been here all right wow so rob you've already painted a red panda you've done it that's cool nice nice that's way cool. Well, I I didn't, as soon as I put this up, um, this is kind of how out of touch I am with the world. Both um, David, who's in the studio with me, was like, are you doing that because of the Disney movie? And then my wife also was like, are you doing that because of the Disney movie? <laughs> and I was like, well, no, right? This wasn't, wasn't the plan, but I guess, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe we'll, we'll have some... Uh, Maybe some people will find it because of that. That's always the hope. All right, another... So I'm going to leave that as my highlight brush. And I'm going to come back in and start working in some of these areas. I'm going to get a little bigger of a brush. This is a 10. Because um, I do want to keep it fairly loose. We can always... We can wipe a little bit out if we need to. And, and get a little... Um, a little more um, we can always wipe it out and get a little more if we need like a fresh run at this you know this small painting it's okay we can be quick about it um, all right so I'm so I'm mixing the color I see right below the ear here you know it's kind of a gray but it has a little bit of warmth to it yeah I like that it's all right Probably a little dark. You know, I made that gray using uh, raw umber, cerulean blue, and the lead white. Kind of as this color lightens and comes up. 
you know, I think, I, and I think I see some of that in other places, maybe, you know, do I find, I feel like I find it maybe right here in the inside of the eye, maybe a little bit here and maybe underneath in the mouth here. <laughs> yeah, but that, that's that's both of us. Yeah, there's a there's a Disney movie. I, from what I can tell, a kid um, is able to turn into a red panda or something. I don't know. Maybe on accident. Maybe on purpose. I don't. I'm not sure. It's like maybe a superpower or something. Um, somebody help me out here. <laughs> oh. It's a curse. oh, it's a curse. Like, oh. It's their family's kind of thing. Ah. Passed down from generation to generation. Ah, got it. And not that it was a curse to begin with, but it's become kind of that. Yeah, yeah. It's not. Yeah, from I, I have. I guess I have seen a few clips um, somewhere, and uh, yes, yeah, it's a uh, girl switching in, mm -hmm. uh, switch, switching into like transforming into one on accident at school or something. Um, All right, you know, notice I was just, I saw some of those other grays here right above the, what I thought was kind of the deepest dark of the ear and thought I would, would lay that in. All right, now, um, we're gonna keep moving around on that same theme. But what I see a lot of is, you know, kind of looking at the white that falls here, um, I, I would mix that in it looks like it gets a little warm. So, you know, I can take, I can, again, work directly into what I was working in. I can make it a little bit warmer with some burnt sienna and just kind of see if that's, you know, getting close um, to that edge there. Same for this side over here. It looks really warm and A little lighter, gonna make some other moves. Let's see where we take it a little lighter there. Same on this side, it's probably a little dark. Again, we're trying to transition into this some I'm trying to keep it relatively relatively accurate um, but then realizing I'm gonna have to get a lot lighter and you know that's usually not a problem um, can always in, in this case I think I can go to white and I may want to adjust it now and then, but I think, I think that's fairly accurate there. I'll know more when the rest is logged or, um, uh, blocked in and there we go. I think some of my shape, um, was lost. So, Nice thing is about having my mixed black here. You know, I can, if I, I can just kind of come right back over that stroke. You know, got got a little unruly, and I can come back in over that um, and do the same. I can shape it a little bit. I feel like it's it's a little, almost a little cheek there, and yeah, a little kind of shape there. I'm gonna kind of grab that, grab some of those. Those little nudges that, you know, that kind of like painting a portrait, you have to be mindful of. Um, Cause they, they're like, wow, that's, you know, while, the, while these fur patterns change from an, animal to animal, you know, there's certain things you can, you can kind of look for. 
Uh, Rob, I love your questions, man. Thanks for asking them. All right, let's see. Uh, do you have a main palette of colors that you use? Then just add colors as you need them for a particular painting. Man, you, uh, yeah, that's, I mean, you answered the question for me. I, you know, I really do that. Um, and so kind of taking a look at the palette right here, you know, if I, if I remove these, uh, you're looking at basically the palette I use almost every time, um, you know, it consists of, yeah, nine colors and, uh, I could probably do without some of these, right? I mean, like I, I haven't dipped into the yellow. We will, I'll probably use a little bit to, uh, get some of the oranges here. Um, but I rarely use this. This is a uh, special case only, but then everything else gets, gets used. Um, for this, I just thought oh, I'm going to make it easier on myself. Um, and have some of these on hand, just some of these Browns since I'm, you know, uh, working on, you know, like, uh, animal life. And, but for the most part, I stay away from those primarily because, you know, if you take a look at my palette, I could mix a raw sienna, you know, if I mixed this uh, yellow ochre with burnt sienna, I could make this make, make this color right here. So if I can make it, I'm not really interested in putting it on the palette. Um, same for any of these others. I could make my mixed black with a little heavier on the burnt sienna and I could achieve uh, burnt umber. Uh, this one would be a little harder, but I, I can kind of make it uh, uh, out of uh, the colors I have. And so sometimes it's just like, yeah, I'll probably work a little faster if I have these already out. Kind of like, some, you know, for some videos, I'll already have my colors mixed, and that's just really to save you all time watching. <laughs> uh, because sometimes I'll just mix these up, since I have to mix, because, you know, very rarely are we going to use these directly. Um, and so I'll have to mix. And so sometimes it's just a matter of, you know, do I want to do that beforehand, during, you know, so, and I like to vary it so that, you know, people watching can say, oh, okay, well, that's, that's how he does that. Or, um, or that's how that makes sense. Great question, Rob. Cerulean blue. So the reason why I like cerulean blue, at least in my palette is that, um, if I, if I take it out, and, and really, you know, these two here are my cool colors. If I take those out, basically everything is warm, including this ultramarine blue, you know. Uh, and uh, I needed that for some balance. And, and I do really like having Cerulean just for a cool blue. And if, if I've said this before, Rob, to you, for, forgive me, but the palette is sort of set up uh, in this way. So, you know, um, taking away these earth tones over here, um, uh, a, a warm and cool yellow, a warm and cool red, a warm and cool blue. And really, you know, these kind of don't, don't apply, but, but really there's your primary colors, warm and cool. And then I just like having these around. I, I use them quite a bit. And so, uh, they, they kind of made the cut as it were. Um, and I, uh, and so kind of keeping a warm and cool color on hand and, you know, not trying to overdo it um, is, is always, you know, the, the problem. Because, yeah, you can have so many tube paints out here that, you know, the, the whole thing just falls apart because, you know, it's... Uh, you, 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 well, you, you find you start using, like, some things like this when you don't have to, when you can mix it. And, so anyhow, um, all right, moving in, moving up. I feel like it gets a little kind of warm here, uh, but then, you know, but then we do have, you know, a very almost white little bit here. Um, and all I'm doing when I'm making that decision is saying, okay, it looks warm and white right here. Look, um, it looks a little more of a clearer white here. It looks a little warmer here uh, and I'm, I'm going to, you know, block those in. Same for this other side. It looks much more white. So even though I'm dipping directly into the white, I'm, I'm brushing it against, you know, some of the color that I've already mixed. So it's kind of nice. It's taking off, taking some of the, 
uh, intensity out of the picture and then I'm just gonna kind of block that in there and you know we're already you know the because what's what's noticeable or what do we re immediately recognize in the red panda are these you know beautiful facial markings um, and we're gonna we're gonna try to get those in I still like this I'm gonna use it Oof, I don't know looking at the temperature on it maybe a little bit of cerulean here to cool it off just a tad um, it's pretty it's part above the eye and and some of these shapes they're gonna change you know I just because I'm, I'm putting them down and uh, doesn't mean that it has to stay that way you know I'm gonna come in and get a little more specific um, at times looks a little warmer on this side for whatever reason so I'm going for it um, let's I might finish the muzzle just for fun uh, I see it looks cooler uh, I mean so if we're looking at the source material it's warmer on the right cooler on the left so just uh, looking at that getting a little specific and just making it a little cooler um, and these these are those kind of fun white colors that are like well uh, white does a lot of things and it's 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 fun to work with you can find um, all sorts of variations. Yeah. It gets a little darker around the side. And remember what I said about uh, the whiskers in the beginning, that's gonna be one of our last moves after pretty much the painting is done. Then we're gonna make a few brave strokes, just, you know, across. Uh, or another fun thing to do is just to rake, rake it out. So I could, I'll take my take a palette knife and just pull the paint away and that'll scratch this underpainting too and we can get a nice light. Um, Rembrandt did that in a few paintings uh, where you just see these uh, places where suddenly you know he has all this beautiful like the the ground layer is down there and he has this one little hair that he's scraped out. There's a particular painting of him as a, a younger boy um, and he, he does that it's it's a it's pretty cute uh, whereas like he's his little youthful face and this hair uh, kind of sticking out that he's each one of these little curls he's just drug the paint out of the way it's uh, it's very cool it's a great effect all right, uh, I'm gonna keep doing this here and there. And if I need to, if I need, you know, this maybe seems a little warmer over here. You know, we can we can come back into that. And some of these transitions uh, we'll, we'll work on too. Um, and I, I think this is a great time to just mention, hey, you know, I, I don't, uh, I know, I know, we can get caught up and say, wow, you know, your, your draw, you know, the drawing's right. Or, you know, and hey, I make mistakes. So right now I'm just looking at the width between the eyes in my painting and the width between them. And it's totally different. I don't think it will matter <laughs> ultimately, but I'm just saying I, uh, I'm not perfect. I don't make it right every time. Uh, I'm not a, I'm not a computer. I'm not a camera. Um, but what, what I think is, interesting about painting in general is that you know that's you know that's not that's not what we are there's going to be little mistakes and i think that's what makes it human i think that's what makes it approachable so that's a little too we're going to add some more uh, white to that as i start to try to mix this color right so there's um you know i'm as i do it i'm just it's, it's a little tough because it's right up against a, a similar value to see. See how I got distracted? Remember I was going to finish the muzzle? Yeah, that's what happens. I just get, get totally distracted. So I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do now. We'll see. <laughs> we'll get there. Um, but now I'm kind of excited about this point. There you go. The, the whole squirrel thing. Yeah, that's me. Maybe, maybe add some of this uh, lighter... 
you know, and you'll, you'll notice I, I just used a little bit of raw umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre to create just a little warmer uh, space here. Do the same on that side. I like this uh, kind of darker red there. That's gonna need to go darker, but I tell you what, I'm gonna go ahead and help it do that. You know, and then at some point, you know, we'll, we'll add the glints in the eyes and um, on the nose, and we'll really bring bring it to life. Um, so that can go a lot lighter. And I, I might, oop, look at that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna dive into my, my yellow there, even though it's not really yellow as much as kind of orange. So pulling in, yeah, that's more accurate. Um, I'm beginning that the the fur there and try not to get too too detailed the looser we keep it those brush strokes energetic the more life we're going to give the animal we're depicting oh yes rob that is viridian you called it um and again, I could put out sap green or I could have, you know, but that is a little um, warmer. And what I knew, you know, if you look at my paintings, and I'm not saying that anyone needs to know this as though they were an art historian, but if you were to look at my paintings in 2015, um, I think 2016, 2017, I started to incorporate more cooler colors into the palette. Uh, everything's really warm um, and overly so. You know, it, it certainly needed it needed correction, um, and so I, uh, you know, I, I I was seeing that wow, these just feel really red, uh, and so I, I need to do something about that. So what we're going to get into here and what always happens to me is, you know, I'm, I'm just, you know, enjoying, enjoying what I'm doing and just painting and realizing, okay, I need to work on this area and this area and this area, um, cause I've neglected it. And so, um, yeah, forgive me as I jump around and <laughs> get distracted. But I'll see something that I'm like, ooh, this is like little uh, warmth of hair that kind of comes out right there. And I'll say, yeah, that's what I want to put in right now. Um, I mean, I am, am an artist and, and a painter, so there's some things that just are exciting. All right, so I I put this little shape in here because I think it's it re represents a, a turn in the structure of the the fur. Um, just kind of took a look at the video, and I think I pumped too much uh, saturation into my video this time. I'm always trying to get it more accurate, uh, but it looks like I went over the top uh, this time. I'm trying to get it closer to what I'm seeing, uh, but it looks a little over overly saturated, so. <laughs> and if yeah if we really want to make a you know a whacked out orange just off the charts here what we're doing i mean we can use these cadmium colors notice i haven't touched them yet so we'll we'll see if we need to go there we may not need to go there um you know what i'm feeling like i'm you know, yeah, sure, I had more to work on here, but, you know, I'm distracted. I'm going to jump in over here and do a little bit more of the uh, the muzzle. 
wanted to shape it against the against the nose. So there is, um, forgetting her name. Uh, she, uh, phenomenal painter of animals, um, just amazing. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna remember. And in any time, so current current living painter, uh, any time I'm painting for, I'm always in my mind. I'm just kind of picturing her work. Uh, it's it's a Jen, Jennifer's, I think, oh, or maybe yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna stop myself before I get it wrong. Uh, but kind of keeping that, that energy there, we'll, we'll, we'll try to make the, you know, right now the eyes, uh, maybe look a little angry. So we'll, we'll probably soften that, you know, we don't, we don't want an angry panda. We don't want an angry, we, we want a cute one, right? So. The mouth on the side looks a little warm, um, and I can't quite make out what happens over here. Feels cool, so I'm gonna just take a little bit of the. Yeah. So now you know I've got I've. Now that I have these few spots, you know you'll notice I I'll I'll start to not grab into these two colors because you know i'm really starting to grab from some of these mixed colors uh because i'm like well these are these are these are working for you know what uh you know what i was hoping it would look like or be or and you know realizing yeah these are these are doing it it's like kind of warm on this side notice that we have we have a nice little uh cleft here uh, in the fur that I want to make sure that I describe. Maybe just a little bit of a break. Yeah, see, and th those are the, to me, those are the amazing moments where you're like, oh yeah, it looks even more like that species of animal. It, um, much like if you're painting portrait and you're like, oh yeah, you know, so-and-so has a kind of cleft in their chin or um, and you, you know, you put that in and then suddenly you're like, oh, there's, there's the person I was trying to paint. Um, more, becoming more and more a likeness. Um, I want to add a little bit of, um, a lizard and crimson in to some of these areas. Because while while warm, it is also uh, a little cool. And and remember, how I was kind of talking about this is my cool red, so I can bring some warmth in, and I I feel like it needs a little bit of a red tilt then. And I, you know, I can go there. So Rob says, I've seen a YouTube video and the lady showed loads of mistakes that the old masters made. I remember one was Caravaggio had painted the hand far too big. So yes, mistakes can be a good thing too. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, man, for video, it's really tough. So like I, uh, uh, I, I live in Kansas, and um, so the, you know, the the nearest, which this is a blessing. I've got, you know, I've got a, there's a I can see a Caravaggio just three hours away in um, in uh, uh, Kansas City, and every time I go there, 
uh, I, I am reminded that, you know, oh yeah, here's, here is a, a human being, um, you know, because I think a lot of times we, we look at their art and it's like we think they were like a superhero or something. But you know, I'm to the point now where I can see his drawing mistakes. And I'm not, not, not to be critical, but just to be like, no, no, this was, this was a human being. He um, did the best that he could with the materials and the methods that he had around. Um, but yeah, that painting, I mean, the legs are just really small, you know, in comparison to the rest of his body. And it's, it's not that noticeable, but it is every time I see it, I'm like, yeah, just proportions seem a little off. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, we, it's just, that's what we do. You know, we're, we are imperfect. Yeah, he, this this red panda is looking really angry. We don't worry. We're gonna we're gonna not make him angry. I promise. At some point, but for a while, he you know, he may look a little mischievous. Red panda is up to no good. Again, I'm just kind of looking around the eye, and I'm seeing the shape here. It's a little dark. And yeah, I'll be uh, going to an art fair in a couple of weeks. So well, I thought, you know, it would be great to have a few um, paintings of animals because I because I just don't I just don't do that very often, and I thought it you know I would challenge myself and you know anytime you can s spend time doing something you don't normally do in painting, you know good good comes out of that because it's like the next thing I really need to do is spend time doing landscapes um, and I am. I am not that good at landscapes. And I know that sounds funny because uh, you would think, well, aren't they way easier than painting a face? And I guess to a degree, yes, but um, you know, I'm, I'm such a figurative painter and my mind uh, really thinks that way. Um, so I didn't like that move. I, so I need to make a little bit of a transition um, that feels like, you know, when I kind of unfocus my eyes, like a cool transition, not like a blue. Um, you know, ultimately we're gonna have some uh, whiskers here, but it, my eyes are reading it as a bit of a blue, kind of blue-green color uh, in this transition. So I wanna gonna put that in and yeah, I'm gonna get it wrong and you know, we can come back, we can come back, continue to adjust. Um, I think for the moment that'll, that will work. Um, in order to really make informed decisions, I've, I've got to have more information put in. And so that's kind of what's happening in this, in this space. I think it's a little lighter than I had it. So you see, I just kind of worked right, immediately right on top. Um, feels like it gets a little warmer as it gets up here and lighter so i'm i get a little bit of that warmth there and then on top it's you know very very much white and bright and light white and bright in the light This transition here, it's kind of a gray. Yep. 
Okay. I say that every time I'm trying to decide what to do next. Okay. It's a little bit of a... A light that kind of drops down there, but I'm going to work back into it a little bit here. And still mostly concerned with filling everything in. I think uh, I think my red panda looks a little bit more like like a mogwai uh, from Gremlins right now than anything, uh, which is great, by the way. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Okay, if we get a little bit of that uh, feeling from this. That's probably why we have such an affinity for him anyway, it's gremlins. Okay, so you know what? I'm just gonna see what happens here. I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna mix a little bit more of an intense orange. So, you know, we, we've not come anywhere near anything like this yet. And I'm gonna light it up. And I'm just gonna see if this goes over the top um, when I kind of add it to this sort of highlight here. Uh, probably mixed in, I think it's okay. You know, brought by itself, it would have been too much. Um, but I think this, uh, gotta give him that brow. He's, he, look, he looks even angrier now. Oh, my little, my little angry red panda. Don't be mad. <laughs> Don't be mad. That's okay. We're, we're, we'll fix it. We'll, we'll make him nice and cuddly and cute by the end. It, it kind of looks like a, a mascot now, like the fighting red pandas or or something, you know, we could... It looks like the, the right amount of mean. All right, and on those last two marks, I just, you know, kind of, I'm looking in here and saying, okay, I feel like a little mark there. Um, I could do the same, although I feel like on that side, it's a little cooler. Um, and so come in here and just, you know, drop it in this little, little marks that make him maybe a little more approachable. All right, I wanna look at some of the shapes I'm making um, in and around uh, the face. So I think, trying to decide, do I wanna bring these white markings in a little bit? I think maybe I do. Again, the drawing is just slightly off, and so I'm kind of deciding, you know, how how close do I how close do I want to come to the eyes. I definitely want to keep the eyes low, and and whatever I do, move the markings to the inside since they in my drawing they're a little wider. Uh, than they are in the source material. So, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep a hold of that and realize when it's ready to make some minor adjustments, which it will be eventually, um, then uh, 
I will work to the inside if I'm adding or adjusting the shape rather than you know working to the outside. Tell you what though, it is so fun to just kind of keep moving around these marks um, until the, the magic starts to happen and you know sometimes that you know takes a bit and it's you know it's 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 not there yet uh, that's all right um I see, I see this a little redder down here in this transition so i'll just add a little bit of that down there shape i like that shape a little better oh this this face is just adorable. Sometimes you just gotta step back and say, this face is just so adorable. <laughs> so there's a little bit of a transition that, you know, I can begin putting in on the in-between these spaces. And now, you know, I'm really kind of starting to get to the point of where I'm, I'm, I'm hunting and pecking and uh, I've got the most important thing for me to do now is to fill all the information in um, and so that I can really make Kind of final final decisions on you know how's this going to work how's this going to look um <laughs> you look so angry right now i love it yeah so if if nothing else stick around long enough to figure out how to <laughs> uh to make your paintings for your animals or uh um, your portraits like oh how can you quickly um make some adjustments so that it's uh it's not so intense or or angry looking we'll get there i promise the, the funny thing is is it's almost like illustration or drawing cartoons uh which is what i started with as uh, a young man and uh, it is, you know, are, are the brows, you know, kind of furrowed in, which is what's happening here. Okay, that's gonna happen. If we round out these eyes some and adjust some of the shapes on the kind of brow so that it doesn't look like it's kind of, you know, err, you know, like that, it'll change it. Um, and you can do that with anyone's eyes and eyebrows, uh, when you're painting their portrait, um, you know, all of that is adjustable. It's pretty amazing how, uh, how simple it is too. So when we get there, I'll, I'll try to talk through it, but I thought, oh, I just need to finish working around here really quick and, and then we'll see where we, see where we end up. And yeah, just know I'm going to get distracted on the way, you know, like that. Like every move I make, I'm like, okay, maybe this is going to make him look a little nicer. And then, and then it doesn't. <laughs> it just make, makes his brow look, look, uh, look more and more furrowed <laughs> and angry. little darker and you know so I kind of came over here grabbed a little bit of this just a little redder you know right here 
um, as it comes around the ear. And, you know, those are, those are the things when, you know, most of this is blocked in that I'll be looking at a little closer. And kind of notice uh, I've been doing this here and there. For instance, if I, if I take some of this color that we have here, where, where we're trying to, you know, describe the fur up here, and then um, just letting that, if I, if I start the brush down here, just kind of letting that extend a little bit, you know? And, you know, we let that brush so, so kind of soften that edge, but it also is doing exactly what you would think it would. You know, it would create, oh, wow, that's a, that is a, a furry creature. <laughs> and just letting that brush stroke be there, let it be uneven, let it be unfinished, and I'll, I'll want to leave it that way. And I want to leave it inconsistent too. So don't try to be like, oh, well, I need to do that all the way around. You know, life, you know, anytime you're working from life, it's, it's inconsistent. Uh, things are grouped together in weird ways. Um, and so, uh, yeah, don't, um, yeah, don't try to make things uniform. That's kind of rule number one in uh, painting anything uh, or trying to create a likeness or, you know, we're, we're way more inconsistent and, and weird than you think. Um, and so just doing a few of these marks here and then trying not to, after making that mark, then not dropping back down into your paint. So I've got to cover that over. Yeah, so this is where that, you know, that texture, you know, that I kind of talk about in the title, this is where that happens. So it only took uh, an hour and two minutes to finally get to the title of my video. <laughs> So if, if you hung on this long, you know, congratulations, well, well worth it. Okay, so I'm still just gonna, I'm gonna finish out this area. So you, know, you can't really, after you drag it through up there, you have to come back and dip more paint or wipe the brush off in order to avoid dragging that wet paint back into, you know, where you were working. All right, this little, little big, big forehead, little big forehead. So, all right, uh, let's see. Thanks, thanks, Rob. Thanks for the, the good word. Okay. Um, all right, let's decide on what comes next. Well, I should probably finish out this ear over here. That would be a good idea. which is pretty white, even down below. Looking at it in com just comparison to the white up above. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to bring this down some, uh, but I, it is a little more neutral. So I'll mix in some of this here, still pretty light. So that's a little too dark, a little too, too warm. Yeah, it's a little cooler. So, you know, I, since much of this is orange, I'm having to come in here with the burnt sienna, or not burnt sienna, cerulean, excuse me, and and kind of trying to cool it off a little bit. So you can see how long that lasted. There's, I need to wash out this brush. So it really needs to happen. But I like I like using you know kind of a, a brush that has still a lot of the color in it that I've been working on in other areas. Um, I just find that, you know, you have, it just, it feels like, again, it can get muddy, right? I mean, that's, that's the thing, that's the danger, but as long as you're kind of mixing and working on top, um, you know, having a little bit of what you were working on prior on the brush, not necessarily a bad thing. Um, all 
All right, that was probably a little overkill on my on my drag there, but you know, yeah, well, we'll see how we'll see how it ends up. So some of the things you can do too with with that is you can create you can use a color. So you know there's funny things happen in edges where there'll just be an energy in some of the some of these spots where you know to use a color in there is really powerful. Like um, kind of like I was doing here, I was putting the blue in here because I see all on this edge is something very cool where the white muzzle moves into the rest of the face, that transition just looks cool because there's so many, there's like a dark area back behind and white coming in, it just looks, ends up looking like a cool gray. And so you can use that. Those are the points too you can exaggerate. So I see a few other things that I could try and you know I may later uh, see, see how they go. Um, Seeing how Carefully. All right, let's see if I'm going to work just a little bit. There's a little bit of a, I think, a coolness around the nose that happens on either side. Do not mess with this red panda. This one will bite you. It is, it's, it's intense, this one. This nose is maybe a little wider than I, than I have it. It could also be the fact that I need to bring out, well, you know, while I've got this brush out, use a little bit of, <clears throat> bring this eye in a little bit. On both sides round rounded out some maybe a, a tad less angry right now <laughs> that might have been the first move of hard hard to say right now we're, we're, st we're still we're still on the edge um right on the edge of the uh nose i feel like is another great spot to you can just do some crazy and you know take some cerulean and just you know, kind of drop it in and or even maybe on the far side a little bit of the green and you, you can create these uh, little spots of intensity that you know kind of sh shock the eye yeah we're still trying to describe everything in, inside of space but um, you know that I think creates some of that interest is like hey you know I'm making a painting and yeah, let's let's make it interesting um, let's finish off this mouth down here, which I can't quite make out what happens down there. We will have to get out some little brushes here before long and get to a few details, but yeah, you know, not many. Like I said, I'm always trying to keep that good energy. Uh, here's another spot where I feel like you could use a little bit of blue and I 
and that transition. Says, uh, Rob says, I think someone like Rembrandt would add some skin color in the dress and some and some dress color into the skin. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, and that's that, that's that's a perfect pitch for my uh, my like limited palette. You know, like I said, not not usually using these. Um, it doesn't matter what I mix. These tube colors are just about everything is in everything. And I, I think that's one of those unifying features of using a limited palette. You know, you, you can't get too far off, off track, you know, you, cause if you do, um, you know, it gets, uh, it gets really wrong really quick. Um, I'm going to make this a little bluer and lighter. I've got a reflection from my window right now, so I can't quite tell if that's doing what I want it to do. Um, we'll check later, check on that later. Yeah, but when you're using a limited palette, you're mixing everything. And and so, you know, even though, um, like for instance, this orange was, you know, raw sienna, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, some of these, but I mean, uh, in order to make this black, I had to use burnt sienna. And so th that is there, but it's also here. Um, and, and I feel like those are the parts where, you know, you can, you can keep incorporating these things. Uh, Might get a little specific here. We've got kind of the nose right there. And it kind of fades into the the white. Um, so I'm still using the same brush. Only I'm just kind of the reason why one of the reasons why I like flats is you know at times can be a line if I need it to be a line, you know, just using it on its edge. It can be a point if I use it on a point and, you know, or a plane if I, you know, use the whole brush. And I don't know, that's just always been a uh, way in which it's made a lot of sense to me. I, I like using them that way. I like kind of how it cuts, cuts across. especially on something like this, where we want some, some hard edges, uh, and okay. I wanted that to get a little warmer than I had it. Again, that transition there, you can see between the white part of the fur and um, the kind of the side of the face, there is just a stronger, you know, you get more of a color like this. And so just to put some of that in, uh, even if it's not all that much, um, just helps the, I think help the, the pain to tra transition there. And this I feel like kind of starts going down into the head there a little bit, but really it stays very sort of brilliant white. Um, I may add a little bit of lizard and crimson in there just to give it some warmth um, at least around this area
dig back into the white. That little bit right here, you know, the sears. Take a little more present than I have it. Okay. So let's, so, so a few things that we haven't done yet that really will just kind of set it off is adding some of the highlights around being a little more specific on a few areas um, of the nose and mouth. Um, I, I, I will, I think I'll do a little bit on the eyes, but then I'll probably call it on, on this video and I'll just do the rest of the, the careful rendering uh, on my own, uh, on my own time. But uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get a little more specific in and around the eye, and I'll try to get see some so some of those shapes and, um, and some of the areas around it just to give it a little more life. I think for the most part, you know, there's some pretty good things blocked in. And I tell you what, I, what I also do, I will do that, and then. I may uh, scratch out a, a whisker or two just to kind of show you how, how that part goes. So let's, let's do the eye next. Yes, Rob, question, I love it. Uh, do you use oil gesso to prime surfaces? I'm not uh, clued up properly on how to prepare canvas. I heard there's oil gesso and acrylic gesso. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's certainly other options out there. The nice thing about oil is really you can, you can do it on any serve you know it can be acrylic or oil there's like oil based or not um the only thing that i've noticed and uh is that it seems like the oil base will um allow the paint to stay wet longer um but that's you know that that's something i i haven't spent a whole lot of time with um and and i'm afraid like uh Whew. I'm I'm not terribly good at technical questions. Um, well, primarily because I I've just not spent the time to discover those. I've just been painting. <laughs> like like I'm like no no I uh, you know I want to make paintings. Uh, and at, yep I'm sure that I could help myself out if I did a little more study on on that sort of a thing. And uh, and no doubt. I'm impoverished uh, because of it, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a little. Uh, I could, I could learn a lot in that. Okay, I'm gonna round out the eyes a little bit. So we don't have a mad little guy. And there's another small brush. So we've got the eyelid, which will be that line will be really important. So I'm not finding another one of my liners. Here's a recommendation, you know, for make, doing live stream videos, being prepared. I don't know, you know rather than like, oh yeah, I, I can't find a brush that I probably would have known I would need. So just finding another little small, little zero brush. And so I'm going to be looking at the two little eyelid lines uh, here. And um, they're lighter, uh, but they're, you know, they're not really white. And I'm going to brace myself. Usually I like to use my pinky I like to kind of brace myself and then uh, just kind of come in here. Maybe just a little stroke there. Do the same on this side. I mean, get a little more specific there, but we'll we'll go a little over the top, and we'll go and add a add kind of a glint 
here-ish. Um, and it's, and it's pretty amazing, you know, that, that little bit of information oftentimes uh, brings, brings the life into the piece and you realize that ah, it's just a little dot, but you know, it really doesn't. Um, so that, and then uh, there across the nose to it's a little cooler, but you know we have a little reflection light um, down here, up here. And sometimes we can just even make one up on this side that mimics the ones over there, even though I don't necessarily see it. Um, I, I will sometimes just put it in just because. Um, Gives a little. A little more, a little more life, I think. Um, looking a little less angry, I think. That's a good thing. Um, I'm gonna maybe still a little angry, but I take a little bit of my burnt umber. And I'll yeah, just carry it out here. So um, looks like on the outside of that. And I'll, this will be something, this will be a back and forth. You know, I will, I will work on this kind of until I really see it feeling like, okay, yeah, yeah, I can really, I really feel the, The, the eye socket and so I might come back in here with, with the, this color and, you know and I think that got a little m m kind of mushed up there I think there's a little bit of a color break there that I can see when I look at the eye Same on this side too. Even though that um, that ground layer, this uh, color here, that raw umber rub that I just have in there, that is acting in some some places. That's still showing through here, 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 here. But now you know it. It's just working along with everything that's there, and that's another reason why it's nice to work on a color if you can, um, just because maybe sometimes you don't quite get all the edges in and, and that, then that color just sitting there doing, doing a little bit of the work for you. <laughs> uh, and if you're, if you're anything like me, I, I just need all the help I can get when it comes to painting. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny, isn't it? Like the, the one, the glint, right? <laughs> like, yeah, it seems like such a small detail, but then, you know, the, and it, that's one of the reasons why I, I tend to leave it for, for later or last or near last is because it forces me to work a little harder in, uh, in some other areas to, to make them work. Um, and then when those are areas are working, then I'm like, okay, you know, that's, uh, Add the icing, icing on top. And really, you know, the the painting is at a point now where you know you do have really have to decide, you know, okay, how how long Will I continue working this? You know, yeah, I can I can come back and work on it again and again and again and again and again until you know I really get there or you know or I cannot. Alright, so let's do let's have some fun. Um if you don't mind. A little more of a sharper edge here. You know, if we wanna so if we wanna just kind of start making some of these marks, we can just kinda of go like this and just go. Um, and, you know, just kind of raked away a little bit of that paint. Um, and obviously 
this, wow, there's so many whiskers, right? <laughs> and uh, we can we can do this all day um, and not quite get there. Let's do like let's do, let's do one of the big ones. Um, and I mean, so it's like, how many times, you know, do you want to do this or, or not do this or, um, you know, we can do it over and over again. I think so that's, that's one way in which I do it. If, if I, if I'm going to do, you can kind of rake out paint that way. And, and I think it's, it's fun to do some of those that way. And then still take, you know, grab a little, uh, you know, kind of liner brush load it up with white and then do do a similar thing you know so if we've got kind of a that looks like a darker whisker and i'll just do the same thing it has to be has to be quick very decisive and just like a you know that's it um and then you know that kind of has to stay there and you know, leave it uh any no 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 fussing um so i uh i'll do it i'll do it again maybe on this side where it's a little easier this right-handed, a little easier to go that way, a little harder to go this way. I'll hold my brush like this and I'll make a move more like that. So let's just see where this goes. See if I like it. See like, it. yeah, you know, eh, it's okay. <laughs> um, and <clears throat> I mean, you can do that as, as much or as little as you want and, you know, achieve, achieve some of the, the effect there. I, I like, you know, some, some of these whiskers, you know, cause they're a little darker. Uh, they look a little blue, so you know maybe I'll take a little bit of blue, and you know we all day, you know you could just kind of keep going on this, kind of creating more and more of that um, until you know until until you've got it, until you feel like okay yeah this this is it. Um, so that's kind of, that's kind of a fun way you can rake it out, um, but kind of whatever it is you have to sort of remain decisive. And then and then leave it there, um, and you know don't don't work into it too much, uh, which is always the difficulty, right? So I always want to work into it. That was a good move. I just kind of put that in there. That was helpful. I liked that. To me, gave more life, and that was a very felt like a very small thing. Um, yeah, and if and if on some of these, you know, like all right, I put the white out there. Well, now I've got white in my wet paint there. Or you know, I've drug that color out farther. Or, yep. I mean, that's kind of why I said you know, you save that for last. Um, when you're like, I'm not gonna do anything else. This is gonna be these are gonna be my last moves. And then however they fall, I'm gonna leave it. Um, and sometimes it can work really well. Sometimes it's like. Ooh, it was okay. Maybe I shouldn't have done it. Um, and so you just have to live with it. Now I, I probably could wipe it, you know, wipe it in a little bit or wipe it out and try again. Um, but there's always the, for me, the desire of wanting to leave some of that, uh, natural energy that happened when I first laid the paint down, just leave some of that honesty there, um, and not letting it get too, uh, Cause it can, it can feel too tight quick. Um, and, and, uh, yeah, I want this just to be a little darker here around the eye. I think I could just, I like that, even though it's not there, I'm just looking at it and thinking, you know, I think a little bit more energy would be fun there. A little more color variation, I guess. Um, this white out into here a little bit and and really at this point uh you know every every little move from here on out um has the opportunity to just you know create greater and greater uh energy likeness um you know the the major things have been taken care of 
and you know and now it's just about um like you know how how much play do i you know really want to you know give this and how soft and cute do i want to make it you know uh and just continuing to work in it but still leaving it loose and full of energy uh and i i mean i just i, I find that a little more approachable than you know if i would have taken you know the liner and tried to describe every one of these little bits of fur that I saw. Um, whereas treating a little more like, okay, I'm gonna focus on the shape and what the shape's doing. And I can get a little more specific now that I'm kind of just looking at this whole area here. You know, I filled it in, but I didn't get terribly uh, exact. And, you know, there's a few things that I can add in, like, for instance, uh, it seems like there's a few spots here where we have kind of a deeper, um, like, a, I don't know, there's a deeper furrow, I guess, of, of fur. And so, like, if I just take, you know, I darken to this brush up, nice kind of warm dark, and I just kind of take that up um, here, maybe there, maybe a few spots. Uh, I, you know, I'm, this one was like, eh, that's probably about it, you know, uh, and, and just kind of leaving leaving that as it is, maybe doing that in a few other places as though as though that this is the hair behind the parting of two other areas of fur. Um, you know, yeah, you, you just don't want to, you know, you start adding those things, you just do it gingerly. You'd say, you kind of feel it out, maybe put one down, say, okay, that was okay. Try another one um, and continue going. I'll probably soften up a few more things. Um, I'm going to keep working on this for probably another 30 minutes to an hour. Uh, and then, I don't know, maybe, just maybe, uh, uh, I will uh, come back this afternoon with a little more, with, an, with another woodland creature of some kind. Um, I've, I've got the time right now, and so, and I've got to set up, you know, that's always a little bit of a bear to set up all the cameras uh, and things. So, so we'll see. Uh, anyway, I hope the, uh, the video is helpful, uh, to everyone and, um, I may be back after lunch for another go at another little, uh, beast of some kind. So, um, tune back in if you'd like this afternoon and uh, tell your friends and thanks so much for hanging out today. Uh, leave a question in the comments if you've got it, if you're watching this later, be glad to help. Um, thanks, Rob. I'll, I'll see you. Uh, I, I will be back in the, I think in the afternoon. Sometimes I can't promise that because I'm like, well, but uh, I, I may try. So thanks, my friend. We'll see you next time, whenever that is. Take care.